Welcome to Launton Cemetery. I would like to respectfully acknowledge the Turbal people and the traditional country in which this event is taking place and the elders both past and present. I also recognise those whose ongoing effort to protect and promote Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures will leave a lasting legacy for future elders and leaders. My name's Helen and this is Kelly and we're from Moreton Bay Region Library's local history team and we're here today to talk to you about Launton Cemetery. Today we invite you to tour the burial grounds of the people and the pioneers that helped shape this area. The first grave site we're going to visit today is the Lees family. Now Carl Lees and Caroline, they came from Germany in 1861. They had to travel over here by ship which took them 98 days. Can you imagine being on a ship for that long? Not only would you be leaving your family and friends behind, you wouldn't know what you were coming into. You would just heard of this place called Australia. It would have been so scary. And to make matters worse, poor Caroline was pregnant with her first child. Carl was 24 and Caroline was 26. Can't even imagine how hard it would have been on the ship for them. Now they arrived here with over 370 other German passengers. They went to German Station, which was at Nunda. They could spend months there or even up to a year. And while Caroline had the baby, Carl went looking for land and he chose this beautiful area against the Pine River here. About a year later, they moved in here and onto the land and Carl continued to buy property. And by the late 1880s, he had over 60 acres here. He was very instrumental in getting the first cemetery here and he sold a portion of the land for this cemetery that you see here today. He was also considered a jack of all trades. He was a farmer and he owned a ferry and he used to ferry people across the North Pine River. And that was um, school children as well. There was a school on either side of the river, a provisional school. And sometimes when it flooded, the kids couldn't get across there. And so Carl would come along with his ferry and transport them over there and if not the children, the teachers as well. Caroline was a midwife. Now she would have been very liked in the area because she would help people deliver babies and they called on her. So they were quite an outstanding family. They put a lot into the community and helped when they could. Together, they had nine children, which can you imagine having nine children? No hot water, no washing machines. They had to do things, you know, heat by fire. I'm sure the elder kids would have looked after, helped look after the young kids as well. Carl was a foundation member of the opening of the first provisional school. And as I mentioned, he used to take them across the river. And he was also one of the trustees of this cemetery. Caroline Lease, Carl's first wife, died at the age of 43 in 1880. Carl went on to marry and he married Grace Lease and she was to bear him another 10 children. So that's 19 children. She would have had to look after the nine children that Carl had previously, and then she had 10 children. So it was big families back then. After raising her family with all the hardships, just 20 years later, Grace was heating up to wash her clothes and all the clothes of all the kids, and her dress caught fire. They rushed to North Pine to call an ambulance and Grace was taken to hospital, in at the Brisbane Hospital. It's interesting though, because in a report the next day, Brisbane Courier, which was the paper at the time, put a little piece about this woman from North Pine getting burnt and flames going up her dress. And they said that they expected her to make a full recovery and she would survive. Unfortunately, she died later that afternoon. So here she is buried here in the cemetery that they both loved on the land that they owned. The next time you see an old or historic cemetery, look for fencing surrounding the cemetery plots. Is it stone? Is it made of wood? Or does it have iron around it? Now this brings us to Stephen Lawn. Launton is actually named after Stephen. He was an early pioneer here and he came from England. He was 26 years old when he travelled here. Now there are two reasons for fencing. 
they were to define the cemetery boundaries or they were to surround the family plots. You might wonder why they needed fences. Now that was to keep the animals out. There was a lot of wild animals here at the time and also livestock, a lot of cows and things like that because um, there were dairy farms all around this area. And so they used to put little fences, which I think looks quite nice. The little fences had little gates in them. And when you are looking for them, you could think of Stephen Lawn because he was a blacksmith here. There weren't too many blacksmiths here at that time. And he quite possibly could have made quite a few of these. Now, Stephen first erected his smithy, as he was called, on the other side of the river. And he would help the families with any um, things like making pots so that they could wash their clothes, any old ironwork that you can think of. So he would have been quite popular. So he was a farmer as well. So he also worked the land as well as being a blacksmith for the community. He eventually moved his business to this side of the river. And if you know the area at all, where Launton Tavern is, that would have been about where his house was. He married Hannah McCrone in 1873 and she's actually buried here with him as well. At the beginning of 1877, when the government was putting in a bridge to go over the North Pine River, Stephen was actually contracted to make all the nuts and bolts and all the guard rails out of steel. And so that would have been a really big job at the time. And then when the rail came through, he also was contracted to make the bolts for the railway line. Stephen gave up part of his land for the railways so that we can have the train line through here, which came through in 1888. And that is why they decided to name Launton after him. So you expect to see some sad things in the cemetery, but there's some things, some graves that hit a bit more close to home than others. And then, for example, this tiny, two tiny graves. Now you would think these belong to two little twins. They look like children's graves. They're very small. And sadly, there's no names on them. But actually, there's three people buried here and they were buried nine years apart. So the first person buried here was Donald Watson. Now he was only young, probably three or four, we're not sure exactly because due to privacy issues, his death certificate isn't available. But then his brother, Fred Frederick, grew up, got married. Frederick's wife, they were quite young at the time, um, unfortunately died, died in childbirth. Now her name was Emma, and Emma and her, her stillborn child are buried here next to little Donald. So it's a cross-generational grave, it's very sad. Um, now, if you see graves like this that don't have names, you can actually discover who is buried here. On the gates over there, the North Pine Historical Society has gone to a lot of trouble to identify most of the graves here. But you can also have a look on the cemetery database, which is available from the council website. And you can look up by plot. And once you have a name, you can investigate further. Look on Trove, look on our catalogue and see if you can find out more about some families. So now I'll show you the O'Lone family plot here at Launton Cemetery. So here we have the burial place of Hugh O'Lone and his wife Janet O'Lone. Now Hugh O'Lone was a constable in Northern Ireland and he and his wife Mary at the time had eight children. They came to Australia and unfortunately Mary died in childbirth. As there weren't any dentists or doctors around, he became a jack of all trades. He extracted teeth, he fixed set limbs and all sorts of things. And we like to think um, after Mary passed and he met his next wife Janet that they met through her father who unfortunately accidentally drank some carbolic acid instead of whiskey and wasn't feeling the best. So Janet had been previously married to Donald McNevin and together they had three children. Um, Hugh and Janet had another four children together. So between the two of them, they had 15 kids. He built a house at North Pine next to where the police station was. That house is still here today and it's named Lornaville. And Janet stayed there until her death in 1940. Um, Hugh was well known in the community and became a chairman of the Redcliffe Shire Council at one stage. So the last grave I want to show you today is this lovely one here that belongs to William Piggott. Richard William Piggott, better known as Billy Piggott in the area, and his wife Ellen ran the bakery at Strathpine and later a store. Both businesses were carried on by later generations until finally the bakery was taken over by Tip Top in 1961. Um, Billy Piggott delivered bread to the surrounding areas, so South Pine, Albany Creek, um, he also loaded bread on the train to go to further regions. Billy Piggott was well known and well loved in the area. He's known as a neighbour to everyone. He'd deliver his bread and he'd stand on the step 
maybe have a coffee, a cup of tea and some bickies and cake. Um, and he nearly, according to one oral history we have in the collection, he um, nearly had a mishap that way. He fell the top step gave way as he was standing there having a chat and a cuppa and he nearly fell through. The mother of the, um, of the girl telling the story was quite embarrassed because she'd been at her husband to fix that step for quite some time. So Billy Piggott is well known as one of the district's greatest treasures and the Piggott Reserve at Brendale is named after the family. Cemeteries are an important part of Australia's past. The monuments give us an insight into the people's lives, the very pioneers that actually lived here. Up at the local history room up at Strathpine, we've actually got diaries and you can read what they did day by day. It's so fascinating. You're welcome to come up and have a look anytime. I'd like to thank you for coming along. I hope you've enjoyed this virtual tour. You can find the information on our website. It's just the Morton Bay Libraries catalogue, the History and Heritage section. We have lots of photos. We have lots of manuscripts. So pop in and say hi, go online, have a look. If you've got a query about any of the cemeteries or about any history in this Morton Bay region, give us a call or email us. We can be contacted through the libraries. And thank you very much for coming. I hope you've enjoyed it.